So it turns out Thursday today was our lucky day for DLC 4. Earlier in the day, we got a full trailer dropped here for us in which the DLC is coming right over the horizon here. Tuesday, we're gonna see DLC 4 entitled Shadow War drop for PlayStation 4 and then 30 days later for Xbox One and PC users. But while a lot of it was straightforward, just looking at the maps and what we have up on deck, there are six things in particular that I think you might have missed here that may have some very large gravity to them. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down six things that you may have missed six larger things of course here that I think just completely went under the radar for a lot of people but we breaking it down letting you know everything you need about it here but let's just jump right into it so of course you do end up having your three maps firstly airship which is a mountaintop facility based around a zeppelin which I'm really hoping you can have some action in the zeppelin that is such a cool feature here I think that you have the scenic view with that but of course you have the mountaintop which kind of reminds me in terms of just visuals like summit but from what I've seen it doesn't look anything like like that in terms of actual map layout, just the visuals that we've seen previously in some of the classics. Then you have Excavation, which looks to be a nice close quarters map and has some cool little underground tunnels. And then the final multiplayer map you have is Chancellery. This one, it seems like there's a massive courtyard in the open, but still a lot of close quarters play within the buildings in this map. And one thing we'll get to in just a second comes from this map preview in particular. The war map Operation Arcane looks so, so cool and has a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today focused on in this one because there's some super cool stuff that we've never seen before in World War II added in with this one. So that said, things like a wall hack serum, the Tesla gun is returning, but we'll get to once again all of that in just a second. And finally, again, zombies is that conclusion. Personally, I enjoy the overall lore of zombies within World War II, but I can't say that I give you the most accurate representation if I try and break everything with that down. But one cool thing is that what we saw out of the leaks recently actually looks to be true. That boss zombie here at this one is one that ends up feeding off the others and it gets stronger before it attacks you. Then you also see that it's kind of the culmination of all the Easter eggs and all the objectives from previous maps. So looking like a maybe a super Easter egg here at that one. But as for the things to actually break down that you might have missed out of this, the first thing comes actually from some marketing material. This piece in particular isn't actually found within the trailer that we ended up getting for DLC4, but instead it came out with some of the press packaging from Activision and any other subsidiaries that have their hands on it that sent it out to those that have press kits. One that you guys may be familiar with is of course Charlie Intel ends up getting that kind of stuff and other content creators such as myself will get these from time to time as well to which we end up seeing something of a sort of overlook for the map of airship to where you can see two players sort of rushing down to a lower balcony in which there's a gunfight going on obviously but we see an over the shoulder look at the soldier who ends up holding an LMG that we may not be too familiar with because if you look at it that shouldn't be anything in game right now. A lot of the things out of these trailers are base default weapons and that doesn't even look like any of the variants that we've seen thus far. So what myself and a lot of other people in the community are thinking is this is a brand new weapon. Now I'm no super massive gun experts, but it is something that a lot of the keen eyed experts over on Reddit and other social medias have pointed out this might very well be the Walmer LMG or what might actually end up being the FM 2429 or what it's probably known in the game files as and has been there for a while in the game files the Chate La Roe. Now this is something that is very interesting to me because obviously we have seen new DLC weapons previewed in DLC trailers before, the last one being the Delisle was in the DLC trailer in which we saw a short little clip of that where the sniper running up the staircase on Stalingrad, but this might be that next introduction of some weapons we end up getting. Now that is something that right now we ended up seeing that the most recent hint of new DLC weapons came with the Delisle once again, but that was something that happened with the following event that happened after that. This one in particular might be the same thing in which it follows suit in the update for the DLC but doesn't go live until the next following event, probably a week to two weeks after the DLC launches, or it could be something in which we end up seeing this added in with the DLC and made live then as well because we'll talk about this more in probably tomorrow's video. I'm still rounding up a lot more information to talk about this, but a brief little mention of this was that Sledgehammer said DLC 2's update will in fact have a new division. So maybe we end up seeing this new LMG is a new division weapon that we end up getting for when we prestige, but until then we don't exactly know, but there was something that was definitely one a lot of people missed out on because it's not in the trailer that you might see immediately, but I wanna let you guys know about it. So new weapon, 
possibly confirmed. Next up on this list is something that I'm really also curious about because there could be a number of different explanations here for this, but during one portion, when we take a look at Chancellery, there is one sequence where two players are pushing, one with a riot shield, one followed behind him with the Itra Burst. Now the player with the Itra Burst reloads and then looks to do what is a slide motion. And as you guys know, sliding isn't in the game as something we can do as players. It is something paratroopers can do, but we as players don't have that option. So in my immediate reaction to this, I was like, wait a second, do they just put sliding in game for DLC 4? But again, kind of thinking this out now, a few hours after it happened, there's four explanations I have here for this. One, it was a crouch with sped up animations, which is probably what this might be. I'm probably saying that's maybe 40% the case here with that. That's my relative guess on the certainty for that one. I don't want to say it is, and I don't want to say it isn't, but some trailers do have skips in them throughout the year out of this. One of the most notable to me was the multiplayer reveal trailer where there was the fighter pilot going across the scene on USS Texas, where the entire thing slowed down to about 10, 15 frames per second instead of the normal 60. So that might have been the same sort of thing where it just was sped up and that animation wasn't anything other than more so a crouch and then walk. But then we could also maybe end up seeing that this is a toggle on ability since it already is in the legacy code. And again, paratroopers even have that ability to use it. Maybe we can end up doing that how, say you can end up toggling the scramble with the radar of the resistance division. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's a new basic training because again, that was something that was teased by Sledgehammer very briefly in today's update. And it definitely would be cool to see a sacrifice of a new basic training in order to get the sliding back. I'd be curious to see how that adjusts the meta. Or maybe it's a complete division overhaul in a sense and is a division specific item because that's something that again is happening with DLC4's update. But who knows? Number three on the things that you may have missed is new technology actually plays around with the idea of mythic and paranormal tech that the Reich actually reportedly sought to harness near the end of the war. That's the entire basis of the war map Operation Arcane, which to me is super cool. I know that having talked to the guys at Sledge, one of the big things, of course, with World War II at the very beginning and a selling point for a lot of people was that of historical accuracy. Now, of course, with time going on, we've now had the ability to kind of go off and have a little bit more more of a fun approach to this instead of having to have everything deeply rooted and if it wasn't anywhere near that well then absolutely no way you can put that on the table type of deal so the guys at Sledge have been trying to have some fun here with this and I think this is probably the best thing that we can see here out of how you can end off the content season I think this is such an awesome way to tie in the end of the war here at this one and of course end it off with a bang because as you guys know even though a lot of the tech probably was not ever coming close to completed that's something that the Reich was supposedly working on. So technically still historically accurate, even though we do have things that is like the Tesla gun, which is the next thing I wanna talk about. The Tesla gun is making a return here and it looks like only in the capacity of the war map Operation Arcane. That's another thing that I'm kind of curious on because there are multiple versions of what we see in the game trailer, but also in the marketing material once again. Coming back to that press kit that gave out a couple of extra images here for promo material for DLC4, we end up seeing that the Tesla gun in the images given are purple, but in the trailer we end up seeing that is green. And that's something that we don't know exactly why, but there seems to be multiple different phases or multiple different Tesla guns that will be available and usable throughout the map. Now, I don't know if it's gonna act the exact same way in which it's going to have as much damage as what we saw with Attack of the Undead, where it is a one-shot explosive weapon within a certain radius, but I would imagine it's relatively in line with that once again. But after the Tesla gun kind of comes back into something that might actually play into why there's multiple, there are new abilities here at this one in which they're going to be called serums, once again playing into that tech of trying to create a super soldier, which is what the Reich ended up trying to do at the end. That's something that we'll now see multiple different serums being usable and what looks like to be the way that you end up getting it, very similar to how you get, say, the Molotov in previous war maps where you pick them up out of the container and then can equip them. And that's something that we've already seen one in the trailer detailed in which it looks like you have wall hacks for a few seconds, very similar to maybe the Oracle from Ghosts where it's the outline and they had crossed the barrier of where you're supposed to stay in bounds for the defending or the attacking players and other war maps. But then there's also one that was detailed in an interview with Greg Reisdorf who ended up saying that there is one that will give you increased health and a sword that's only a usable with that. So while you kind of become a juggernaut in a sense, you're also a more passive juggernaut. You don't have a weapon Weapon, you end up having just a sword, just a melee weapon. So it'll be interesting to see how these actually play out, how powerful or OP they may become, or if they're relatively useless and just something that's there for fun. But that said, that's gonna move us over into the final thing that I wanna talk about here today with this, that being free DLC access. And that's something that might kinda sound crazy to you at first. 
DLC and free with Call of Duty. That's not something we normally see, but it is something that season pass holders now have the ability to grant extra access to players that do not have the DLC maps. And so that is where we end up seeing the introduction of this brand new party up match access. A little rundown of how this works is that if you don't have the maps, but play with somebody that does have the season pass, you'll by extension have access to those maps in DLC 4, which honestly I think is fantastic. This goes until the 28th of October. You actually have to read the fine print for once on this kind of stuff. It's not something that stays around forever. It goes until the 28th of October, so you have a good bit of time to play, but it also says it may end sooner than that. I can't imagine it would, but they gave that disclaimer that they can end it earlier than that. The other fine print also is that the season pass owner must be the party leader of whoever the group is that is going in and playing the map. So that's something that again, from a matchmaking perspective, makes sense. The filter there in matchmaking is set for if somebody has DLC maps, it's trying to filter out who doesn't and who does. So from that perspective, it makes sense that it would only want to attach to those of the party host. And honestly, this is something that I really hope continues for a while because this is a brand new feature that we haven't seen and it potentially has the ability to nullify the argument of DLC splitting the player base by a little bit. Obviously not always because if there are set parameters, of course, outside of those time frames, you're going to have that player schism. And as well, you're also going to need to have at least one person in every party compensate for the players that don't. But honestly, I think it's a great way to kind of bring that problem and at least narrow the gap there that is created. So I would love to see this continue, but whether or not it does, who knows? But that said, that is where we're going to wrap it up here at this one because that is a lot we just talked about, a lot of things you may have missed, and of course, DLC 4 Shadow War comes out this Tuesday on PlayStation 4, coming in out of nowhere. And so, I'm excited for this one, hopefully you guys are as well, keep you guys up to date with all things relating to Call of Duty World War 2 here over the weekend and into DLC 4's launch. Tomorrow we got a big update video coming out, I'm again, just finishing up all the different pieces that are still coming out and gonna be bringing you guys all that tomorrow, but again, do not miss tomorrow's video, there's gonna be a lot to talk about. But that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, what other things you may have missed do you guys like the most? Is there anything in particular? If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War 2. We're going to keep you guys up to date with everything you need to know regarding Call of Duty World War 2, DLC 4 content, updates, information, we got you covered. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to check out a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, get a little more active over there as well. So if you guys want to follow on that front, feel free to. But all that's in out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. I'm hyped for DLC 4. Hopefully you guys are as well. Take care and peace.